Hello everybody, today we'll do a quick take on pistons. And I know uh, not that long ago, should I say, not no, but not that long ago, I ended up with a, a small block Ford here on a big blower, centrifugal blower. And thank God that he did not put it to use or run it a track because it would have grenaded. Because basically what he had were were NA pistons that was sold to him, built by somebody else, and um, I bet you the first time he boosts that and s says the tune somewhat on the aggressive side to make good power, it would have collapsed the piston. Okay, and I will show you the difference between NA and turbo. A lot of people think it's the same. Oh, just they'll go. Uh, the turbo pistons got lower compression. Okay, granted that. Oh yeah, okay. They got they got. Uh, uh, lower compression now uh, but really the difference is in the ring pack now uh, let me show you guys something here is a big block Chevrolet and when you look at this combination it didn't make hardly any power back in the day because the ring is all the way down in fact let me see what the, the distance between the top ring and the deck Granted, you're at zero. It's 350 thousands. 350 thousands down the hole. Oh, down from the top of the, the piston deck. Now, here is a uh, big block Chevrolet that has been modified, highly modified. The, the head's been rolled, uh, deck been welded. And if you look at the ring pack, it's very, very high. Now let me bring the other one. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. This one here is very, very thin compared to this one. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to get that camera to focus correctly. Now, this one here, the top ring land is at perfect. 150 all right now if all else being equal between these two let's say they had the same head uh, flow combustion chamber exact compression ratio this guy here will make more power because the ring pack is so much higher and what they call the crevice losses okay again we're talking about overlap when you're trying to pull the intake from the exhaust and if you have a real low ring placement here a lot of leftover gases are trapped in there and you can never get them out it's like having a cork behind a, a bottle it just won't evacuate freely so you have a, a dilution factor is quite extensive if the lower the ring is or ring position the more that gets worse now on the Cleveland Fords you can also have the same situation. The ring pack is low because, oh, let me just look at the actual distance from the deck. 300, 300. Why is this 300? Because right about here, the cant of the valve necessitated that the ring pack has to go down lower. All right, because the cat of the valve, you know, it, they open up away from the cylinder wall, okay, and, and you get better flow. But like I said, again, nothing's for free. You do get added airflow because the valve is, the higher it goes, it goes farther away from the cylinder, from the cylinder wall. But here, you end up with a very, very bad issue with uh, uh, crevice losses. Now, I couldn't find my Yates head, uh, my Yates piston here someplace, and uh, the ring land is also like 150 for the Yates. The, different, the Yates came about from the Cleveland, and when they stood the uh, valve angle up, no cap on a lot of these things, or if there's even hardly, I don't remember. But, but anyway, the ring pack goes big time up. Now, we're looking at a turbo big block Chevy piston on a standard big block Chevy head. Now, when you look at this thing here, okay, 
the uh, ring position is 350,000 as well but look at the uh, you don't have that issue with the standard Chevrolet where it cuts through and makes the ring land go down with oh like the Cleveland right here okay you don't have that recess and uh, if you look closely here this one overheated on the intake side see it lifted up there still have the safety margin and that's pretty thick but it lifted up always on the intake side all right you always wonder and I'll explain on, on the next videos when I get to that point why it always melts on the intake side first nitrous or over boost or lean out it'll destroy the intake pocket first and then next is the exhaust but always the intake and I'll explain that this has a lot to do with the flow path on the short side of the head now here we are is the uh, big block Chevy piston I did show that 302 Ford factory and the ring pack is 275 now let me tell you a story I built back in the 90, early 90s a pure stock NMRA power plant for somebody and we were able to get roughly about 450 horsepower with a 500 lift cam pure stock no porting uh, aluminum heads was allowed uh, but no porting but if you run a factory uh, 69 head or factory head you're allowed to do extensive porting in it that's fine and it just about equalized the cast iron head being cast iron had a lot more torque out of the gate with a smaller chamber and all that because the aluminum is a little soft it doesn't uh, has too much heat loss so the torque response is not as good as the uh, the factory head but it has more airflow and uh, it kind of like equalize the the 69 casting as opposed to a twisted wedge aluminum head the 69 cast had small chamber it left the line harder but on top end it kind of like petered out whereas the the uh, TFS twisted wedge made more power towards the time so they kind of equalized the car ran with 500 lift cam low 11 high 10s okay and that equates to about 430 450 horse with a 500 lift hydraulic roller cam pretty doggone uh, impressive that's with a flat top piston okay and uh, I got one of the reasons that I have the ideal just like other pro stock piston this guy here ideal is 150 all right it's it's 150 on the pro stock because you're pushing it over a thousand okay and um, if you're really off on your timing and your air fuel you will lift that intake side and damage the piston now with a 400 small block 430 440 450 horsepower small block Ford I had my ring pack about 125 from top big big difference in power again the crevice losses another in fact I was at an engineering conference and a guy from Nissan wanted to talk to me uh, what I did and I only said so much and he's trying to analyze what I was uh, doing and it says you know what Ben he goes uh, your crevice losses at a minimum right I go yeah I said is your ring position real high I said yes if it's real high and I'm off on my my ignition timing or my fuel or both uh, I will lift the ring or I'll lift the top of the particular wow that is impressive so um, I could get a more I could have gotten more power if I was allowed to lift it more than 500 but the rule state no more than 500 lift that was it anyway when you minimize all the eddy currents on top of the piston through your chamber work and of course your ring pack good things happen and I could have not achieved that number if my ring was 250 or 300 like most of these engines in fact when you look at the new LS the new coyote engines their ring pack is all the way up okay and uh, the factory finally caught on smoke unique for the longest of time kept saying bring in the ring pack bring the ring pack up and the factory yeah they listen to him once in a while <laughs> but anyway especially GM 
Um, eventually, now when I look at all these new engines, the ring pack is all the way up. Freaking amazing. So anyway, they've learned and finally caught on. And uh, like I'm saying, now the difference between a factory or a turbo piston, it's a compromise. People would boost a stock piston. I know a lot of LS guys and 302 uh, small block Ford guys, they'll put a blower on a stock bottom end and usually the fours get away with it if they don't break the block but the ls guys will torch the piston because the ring pack is all is quite thin compared to the typical ford anyway so that is the difference between the two it's the distance of the ring to the top of the piston granted you're on zero deck 150 is ideal uh na uh ring distance you're not going to be successful if you're higher than that Okay, that's why the Blue Thunder, the Neil Head Fords, they look good, the numbers are great, flow numbers, they just don't quite make the power of SC1 or the D3s due to the fact that their valves are standing almost straight up, there's hardly any cant, at the same time the, the ring position goes up. So it's just not airflow. It's just that overlap pull of the exhaust port to the intake. It's got a lot to do with the ring pack that's available or allowable with cylinder heads like the SC1, the uh, uh, SB2 and all that. Uh, they allow that and I tell you what, this pro stock piston without the dome, that's a difference. This old school big chamber pro stock to today's new pro stock engines hardly any dome flat top piston but the ring pack is always high this is 150 it's safe you won't get in trouble okay but if it's a lower horsepower rating and it's na i'll go for 125 but 150 is good all around safe and if you miss your fuel or your uh, timing uh, perimeters uh, you're still gonna be okay but not for long okay Nothing's for free. You're always going to have a compromise. Anyway, please uh, um, like and uh, subscribe to Ben Alameda, ben Alameda Racing. And uh, we'll post more videos. Actually, I'm leaving out of state right now. That's why I'm just like in a big rush. It's getting dark here. And I'm just trying to close the shop and, and pack my stuff before my commander-in-chief, a.k.a. wife, uh, gets on my case. All right? <laughs> She's calling me and say, get back home. So... You could uh, pack and uh, let's go. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, and we'll see you again uh, sometime. Bye-bye.